Hi folks, I'm happy to be back to video making after a relatively long trip to Canada. During the vacation, I saw quite some comments on running Windows using an SD card on the Steam Deck. So this is going to be the main focus of today's video. In this video, I will talk about the new discoveries and how the workflow to get Windows installed onto the SD card can be significantly simplified. I will also talk about an issue that some people might encounter when booting from an SD card with contents cloned from an external SSD. In the first two parts of Windows on the deck videos, I talk about how to install Windows onto an external SSD and then move that installation to the SD card. The reason of these steps were first, I didn't come up with the idea of running Windows on the SD card until after I was able to get it to run on the external SSD. So naturally, I wanted to clone the installation on the SSD to the SD card so that I don't have to redo the setup work. Secondly, the Steam Deck resource page offers an SD card reader driver, so I assumed Windows couldn't use the SD card reader at all without that driver, which means it won't be able to boot from it without the driver installed first. This turned out to be false. Also, I got comments about Windows 11. Yes, it does work, following the exact same steps we use for Windows 10. So in this video, I will demonstrate how you can install Windows 11 onto an SD card and boot from it without the need of an external SSD. Getting Windows installed onto an SD card without the external SSD is really simple, still using Win2 USB, but this time I'm going to use a Windows 11 ISO and install it onto an SD card. The only difference here is that we have to manually select Legacy as installation mode. Previously, with an external SSD, this option was automatically selected. This is going to take much longer than an external SSD due to the SD card's obvious lower speed. If you see the tool stuck at 0% for too long, you can always go to the Performance tab of Task Manager to confirm there are activities on the SD card. I will just skip the rest of the process on the video. Once it's done, just pop the SD card into your Steam Deck and boot from it. The first boot of Windows 11 from the SD card is a long process and involves a couple of reboots. You can always change the default boot device to the SD card so you don't have to shut down the machine every time it reboots into SteamOS. One difference between Windows 10 and Windows 11 is that Windows 11 comes with the Wi-Fi driver for the Steam Deck, but you still have to install the rest of the Steam Deck resource package, so it doesn't really matter that much. The setup process of Windows 11 is also notably more tedious than Windows 10. Other than that, which system to choose is really a personal preference. Since we are using an SD card, you can have two SD cards, one with Windows 10 and the other with Windows 11. This way, you can experience both before deciding which one you want to go with in the long run.
built-in SD card reader driver of Windows makes it possible to simplify the process to install Windows onto the SD card like I just demonstrated. But then why do we need the driver from the manufacturer if the one bundled with Windows works well? I did some performance testing of the two drivers. As you can see, the difference is minimal. But it could be because my SD card only conforms to UHS-1 standard. If we look at the driver stack, we can see the driver from the manufacturer takes over the PCIe device and creates a SCSI drive. What does this imply in terms of performance, power, and trim command support? I'm not sure, but I do suggest installing the driver provided as part of the Steam Deck resources for Windows to get the most out of the SD card reader. Moving on to the next topic of this video. Some people may have encountered problems when booting from the SD card with contents cloned from the external SSD. This indeed could happen, and it looks like a bug of Macrium Reflect. It seems to be related to the EFI partition. Macrium Reflect does have an option to erase the target disk before cloning, but even that doesn't help. The only way to give Macrium Reflect a clean playground to work with is to use Windows itself to remove the EFI partition. An EFI partition of a disk with a GPT partition scheme is called System Partition on Windows, and the UI doesn't allow you to remove it. This is why we have to resort to the disk part command to remove the partition. Open the command prompt as administrator as required by the disk part command. The disk part command itself is command prompt, and what commands you can execute depends on the current context. So what we'll do here is that we will select a disk so that we are in the context of that disk, then select the EFI partition, and while in the context of the EFI partition, we delete that partition. Make very sure that you select the correct disk. In my case, disk 5 is the SD card from which I want to delete the EFI partition. So select disk 5 and list its partitions. Select the system partition, which is partition 1. Now, to delete the system partition, you must use the override argument. Once it's done, you can exit disk part command and close the command prompt. Now we can go to disk management to confirm the EFI partition is gone. We can also remove other partitions from there so that Macrium Reflect has a true empty disk to work with. Now we can run Macrium Reflect like I demonstrated in part 2 of the series to clone the external SSD onto the SD card. This will resolve the boot failure that some people observe. So there you have it, a quick follow-up video of Windows on the Steam Deck. Let me know if you have any other questions regarding running Windows on the deck, either using an external SSD or an SD card. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so for future contents. I will see you in the next video.